Greetings. I need to buy a new roller jewel for my grandfather's Waltham pocket watch. So I need to determine the pallet fork gap's diameter because the roller jewel has to fit in it. I'm going to compare and contrast two ways of measuring small things. My last video showed how to use a microscope eyepiece reticle to do this. This video shows how to use a physical gauge. At the end, I'll compare the two techniques. This is a vintage roller jewel thickness gauge. I bought it on eBay. These aren't available as new gauges. If you know of a company selling new gauges, please tell me in the comments. If you want a brand new gauge, the closest modern equivalent is a feeler gauge. Uh, the last time I used one of these was to gap my spark plugs in my Datsun B210 in 1977. In any case, I bought a vintage roller jewel thickness gauge made by the Vigor company. I like reusing and owning vintage equipment, and I like the idea of a gauge designed specifically for this use case. I know it looked pretty big in that photo, but here's its actual size. Using it is simple. You start with the thickest one. You try inserting it into the roller jewel slot. If it doesn't fit, you try the next smaller one. Repeat. I'll use the new gauge to measure the gap. I'll do it under the microscope so I can record it for you to see. But using a microscope isn't necessary. You can definitely use this effectively with just a loop. I don't expect this to be a big deal, but for what it's worth, I've never done this before and I don't know what I'm going to find. So here we go. Here we are, the microscope's at about one and a half magnification, uh, which means it's about 15X because I have a 10X eyepiece and I'm going to start inserting the gauges. And in fact, here, let me see if I can show. So this is what one of the, the prong of the gauge looks like at this magnification. This is uh, 0.60, I'm starting with 0.60 millimeters. And let's see if it fits. And it does not. So I will move down to 0.58 millimeters. Let's see if it fits. Does not. So now I will move down to 0.56 millimeters and not quite. Going to go down to 0.54 millimeters coming up. Ooh, almost. Almost. Going down to five, two millimeters. I think that's it. Let me uh, put it in vertically, coming in straight vertical. Yeah, that's point, that's, that's a fit. Goes in easy, it's not sticking. So the gauges say 0.52 millimeters. So now I have to go back and take a look at my reticle measurements. In fact, I'm gonna do that uh, right here, I guess, because that's not what the reticle had measured, so let's do this. So I come over here, and I bring this like that. So I'm gonna zoom in, because we should get the most accurate measurements fully zoomed in. Yeah, this is 25 hash marks at the maximum magnification. So what could I have done wrong? That is 25 hash marks, 10, 20, 25, okay. So now what I'm gonna do is measure the calibration slide again. Well, at this magnification, I'm measuring 100 hash marks is 22.5 millimeters because it's going up to the second hash mark, it's going you know halfway between the second and third hash mark after the number two. Well, it was a big deal. The physical gauge measured 0.52 millimeters while the reticle measured 0.56 millimeters. I'm assuming the gauge measurement is the correct one and the reticle measurement is off by seven and a half percent. That's a very large error. I reviewed my reticle calibration and the measurements I took. I can't find the source of this error. The calibration slide was at nearly the same height as the movement is in the movement holder. I've rechecked my calculations and looked at more microscopy 
websites. I'm very confident that my calibration technique was correct, and I'm very confident that I counted the hash marks correctly for the movement and for the calibration slide. So I'm stumped. While there can be parallax in using the reticle, uh, I was aware of it, um, and it might account for being off by almost one hash mark at 45x magnification. But the error I'm seeing here is like being off by two hash marks. I don't see that being possible from parallax alone. I have a fuzzy theory that's not yet fully formed, and I can't defend it yet. But I'll share it with you anyway. I wonder if there's a mismatch between the distance I'm calibrating against, which is 2.25 millimeters at 45x magnification, and the length I'm trying to measure, which is around half a millimeter. In other words, I'm looking for two digits of accuracy, accuracy or precision. In other words, I'm looking for two digits of precision at 45x when measuring millimeters. And at 45x, I'm calibrating against the two and a quarter millimeter line on the slide. If you have any ideas on where the error was introduced, please let me know in the comments. My next steps are, I'm going to assume the gauge is correct and I need to fill a 0.52 millimeter gap. So I need a 0.50 millimeter wide roller jewel. I use the gauge and the reticle to measure the roller table jewel hole. The 0.52 millimeter gauge is narrower than the hole, which means a 0.50 millimeter jewel would fit in with ease. I'll use shellac to glue it in, so that's good. The reticle measures the hole at 0.54 millimeters, but I don't trust it at the moment. Let me summarize now using an eyepiece reticle versus using a physical gauge. I'm going to pretend that they returned the same measurements uh, because I can't believe the error stems from a fundamental design flaw in eyepiece reticles. Uh, it's got to be somewhere in the steps I took, somewhere in my methodology. So, assuming they got the same numbers, using a reticle is general purpose. If you can see it, you can measure it. That's very powerful, but it also hints at a drawback. Three things are true about multi-purpose tools. Compared to single-purpose tools, they're less efficient, they're more expensive to do one thing, and they're harder to use. Because a single-purpose tool is designed to do one and only one thing well. A gauge made for a specific measuring task will always be using a reticle, but you'll need more of them, and they all will operate a little differently. As for other considerations, the reticle requires calibration, whereas the gauge requires no calibration. If it's in good shape, you just pick it up and you start using it. Using the reticle requires a little math. With the gauge, you find a prong that fits and you're done. Even if they return the same values, I prefer using the physical roller gauge tool. And when I need to measure this kind of gap again, I'll reach for it instead of using the reticle. The reticle has a lot of power in letting me measuring things for which no single-use tool exists, and so it'll still come in quite handy. That's all I have for you today. Remember that age is just a number. Till next time, take care.